Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this portrait of Alfie, I'll be explaining how I did the outline using a method called cross-reference technique and the underdrawing. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just putting a centre point now in the middle of my board and then I've got a centre point on my reference image because I started this off with the intentions of doing it to freehand but then I decided to actually go for a cross reference just to show you a different method but what I'm doing here is just doing the big shape so I'm getting the overall size but from that centre point I'm using imaginary angles and then using the edges of the board uh, and that's how I do freehand. The pencil I'm using is 708 which is a beautiful grey from the Carbothello range and I'm just keeping everything nice and loose so I'm keeping that grip quite a distance away from the point. It was here that I decided to use a different method which is the cross reference just to show you some other way. Right so this is a program called Photoshop Elements 2021 now here I've set up the actual reference image to 11 inches across by 14 inches depth. Now you can see my cursor moving here. Now how I do the cross reference technique is I put the cursor on a point so you can put it on different points. So at the moment I'm just about to do this area but you can just choose different points around the portrait just to give you some location areas and then just freehand the rest so what I do is place that on there and you can see on the top there there's a little dash line and that'll give me the width of where that point is so if I put that on there it looks like it's four and three quarters now on the depth you've got the same thing here look with dashed line and so when I put the cursor on that corner there it's just oh, just just slightly over four then I measure the actual board and then just put a little mark with the gray pencil there where it is and then do plenty of freehand just the odd mark here and there so it's always a good idea not to put too many points in it gets to become like a crutch then you get frightened of being free with it so it's a combination of cross-reference technique and freehand. More freehand than cross-reference uh, because, like I mentioned, you can get too used to it and it stops you being sort of, sort of free-flowing with it. So what I tend to do is keep the reference image small enough so I can see the whole thing and really connect to the energy and the soul of the subject. So here healthy, I'm feeling his energy and I'm letting that guide my hand. So I'm just feeling, if an area is not, not feeling right, I know it needs alteration. So that's what I go with, my instinct. So I don't overthink it, I allow that energy to come into me, open my heart, allow it to come in and out of my hands into me drawing. And that way it, it creates energy within your work then really recommend getting one of these erasers in your kit as well. It's a Faber-Castell needleball eraser. Really good for moulding the shape and you're almost sculpturing the actual line. So if you've gone a bit too heavy with the line, you can just go slightly with the eraser and it just changes the shape of it. Now I'm just using a blue pencil here for a straight edge so I'm using that to find the actual comparison with the vertical alignment just to make sure everything's okay on a vertical plane and I'll sometimes I do it on a horizontal plane as well so you're comparing one shape against the other and that's how I do the freehand as well as doing imaginary angles and one shape at a time. I tend to do sort of big areas and then get smaller as I go along so I do the outside areas and then get smaller and smaller and filling in those big blocks of shapes I've made so I make a big block shape and then fill in inside of it 
If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free. Then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. So here's the colours I'll be using for the underdrawing. Keeping it really simple. Just one red there. Two blues and yellow ochre. And white and black. I will be introducing a grey 708 as well as we go along and a few other colours but I'll just shine them up as we go. Just ghosting the outline now with the Faber-Castell kneadable razor. Just keeping everything nice and loose uh, using the Carbothello white, put more pressure on where it's lighter, less where it's mid-tone and then just using the black to get an idea. So I'm using the two colours there. Now I'm using the brown and the burnt sienna there for the eye colour. So all the underdrawing is really is for is to improve on the outline and just get some sort of form. I'm not that interested in getting the actual values right and the colour shades right. It's all about getting everything in position. It's all preparation for when I start putting the rich colours on. It's just preparing the way so it makes it more relaxing. Each stage has got its own relaxation. So taking all the guesswork out now by putting all those subtle blocks of shade, not necessarily the right colour, but the just blocks of shade, getting that sort of form right and getting the feeling right. It's all about sort of getting that energy, uh, the feeling that there's something shining through even at this stage. So I go by how I feel. So if there's something not quite right, I get a feeling that it's not right, then I pay attention to it. So it's just a case of just keep going through, relaxing, just enjoying the freedom of moving these um, colors, these basic colors around. I'm not too worried about all those subtleties because there's so many little rainbow colors and different sorts of shadows and subtleties which is great when it's the next stage but when you when it's this stage it's best just to keep everything simple so everything is straightforward then now on my computer i've got a small image where i can see the whole of uh, alfie and then a blown up version so i can see the details but i'm focusing more on the smaller um, reference image so I can get that feel and, and get that oneness because it's all about making it a seem like it's there's no separation so there's no little bits like detail on the eyes detail on the nose detail on the ears it's all sort of flowing and sort of melts into each other and that way it keeps it nice and sort of free flowing and it seems more um, energetic then in this part it's a little bit more warmth into it so I'll put yellow ochre in there when I start doing the rich colours I put lemon yellow with that to get that sort of chroma so with this stage it's not about chroma value and edges it's all about getting those shapes in place so it makes it so much easier when we do the next coat because it just takes all the guesswork and you can really enjoy just mixing those colours and the, getting that sort of feeling. But all these colours I'm adding now, it all sort of works together. Because when I'm putting the next colours on the top, I'm letting this colour I'm putting down here shine through in certain areas. So it's like building up layers and it's, it creates that 3D look then. Just line it down to real time now so you can see how I'm doing these marks. I'm using the white to, to map out the area and then using the grey then. So it's the grey and the white. So it's 708 Carbothello grey and the white and just mapping it out. So reshaping things. And then once you've done that, it's just a matter of glazing over them with the red and the blues. So it really creates a fresh feel when you're glazing these colours over the white and the grey. Um, there's two different blues, uh, one's like ultramarine and one's like a true blue. You can't mix that colour, you can mix the ultramarine by adding red to this colour here. So it's interesting to use the two different uh, blues with the black and the grey. 
and it just creates this sort of feeling you want in them this, this shift of different lights and reflected light on the dog's coat and it's just working through and just getting some sort of idea of tone and value but not accurate it's just getting that sort of form just getting a feel for it and like I say it's just preparing the way making sure everything's in the right place just like to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month can't thank you enough if you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below for more details. Now it's a good idea, you know, after a while just to take a break because it can get a little bit taxing if you're not careful. So, you know, a little five, ten minute break it's all you need really just to sort of re sort of set yourself or reboot yourself i suggest sort of sitting quiet somewhere and then just come back all afresh um, because you can get wrapped up in all these sort of details and you get tunnel vision if you're not careful so you have to always feel as though it's coming from your heart and not from your head so as soon as you start to feel like getting tunnel vision it's time to have a break Just slowing it down here again, just so you can see how preparing this, like using the white and the grey, and putting different pressures on that white and different pressures on the grey, just to create that subtle value. I'm not trying to get the value exactly right, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of form in there. Now they are again, I'm using the burnt sienna, brown, and a bit of uh, red in there, just to create a, a similar feel to what I'm looking for. Obviously that's got to be deeper and that'll be all done at the next coat. So basically just really opening up and feeling your way through. Now another important factor to keep yourself relaxed and calm is not to think too far ahead not to look at all the detail because if you start to study all the detail you'll start to panic. You go, how am I going to do that? See, the mind likes to think about things. It always likes something to do. It likes to um, moan about stuff. It likes to panic. It likes all sorts of things. But you know, if you just let go of that and come from your heart and just be in the moment, because that's where the true power is for you, is to be solidly in the moment, not thinking too far ahead. Don't think of anything, no memories, no expectations. Just be here and now, and it's surprising how it just develops on its own without you even thinking about it. Because if you're still looking at those details, you'll go, how the hell I want to do that, and then you just talk yourself out of it. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me, as this would help the channel to grow. Just slow it down to real time here, just to show you how I'm doing the actual part of this ear here. I'm going with the flow, so I'm trying to find that movement and flow of each strand of hair there. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just mapping it out with the white first. Then what I'll do is glaze over that with subtle colors over the top of it. But like I say, this is just the underdrawing, so nothing is all the correct shade and depth that'll all happen in the next video. Just to mention, if you're interested in portraiture, I have a free class that I have on offer. It's in the description below, and it's a skin tone shadow color wheel. But that shadow color wheel applies to everything I do, even if it's landscapes, animals, pets. So if you want to check that out, it's free class. Just check out the description below for more details. Now, how I did this freehand was to work on big shapes and curves first and then fill in the middle bits. So you, you sort of work on the whole, so you're finding bits on the outskirts, then come further and further in and do a little bit of a chunk at a time and then you'll find that it'll just 
it'll all work out. You, you just got to try and get that flow and that movement. And just if you feel feel as though you're drawing that and connecting to that, you won't think about the details then. So just feel feel your way through, and it'll all just happen for you. Again, with this white here, when I start putting the next coat on the next video. I'll be using that Caran d'Ache and Rembrandt white sticks which will be really vibrant and adding that bit of blue to make it stand out. The Carbothello white just makes everything dull so you need these fresher whites. Well thank you so much for watching the video right till the end, I hope you enjoyed that. Now this is obviously like I've mentioned in the video, this is just the underdrawing and the outline. Uh, it's quite a f flat colour, so the next stage, which will be part two, which will be coming out soon, will be really the depth, the chroma. So I'm really looking forward to putting that in. I'll be using sort of them rich, vibrant whites and dark blacks to really bring out Alfie. So if there's any questions about the video or any comments, please leave a message in the comments box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But in the meantime, if you want to see more of my work, please check out this link here.